Ladies and gentlemen, the American Legion Post 338 through its motocross committee 338 proudly presents the American Motorcyclist Association National Championship Motocross. On the starting line is the 125 class ready to go. It'll be 30 minutes plus two laps. That'll be followed in the second moto by the 250 National Championship. And we're ready to go. And the first moto of the day, the 125s are on the line, ready to go. Be just a few minutes before the start of the first 125 moto in this national at Southwick, Massachusetts. The card is up and the gate's getting ready to fall as soon as the card goes sideways. We have a start, this is the first moto of the day. Looks like it's uh, Honda Rider in the number one spot. As they go into the back section, we're going to have to wait to see when they come out. When they come out of the back section, it's Ricky Ryan, Rider number 20. And it's Ricky Ryan in the number one spot, followed closely by Honda mounted number 202. That's Jeff Leask. Ricky Ryan getting an excellent start, uh, working his way up into the number one position right on the first lap. Most of the top riders seem to be in the back of the pack, though. Uh, Vicky Diamond, uh, George Hahn, a lot of the top riders running back in the back of the pack, not getting too good of a start. However, Ricky Ryan comes around for the first lap, and Ryan running in that number one position, looking awfully good at this time. Still being followed very closely by uh, Jeff Leach. And in the number three position, rider number 25, Honda mounted, that's Guy Cooper. Got a few surprises up there in that uh, front running positions. Uh, we just would expect to see some more of the top riders up there. Uh, Mickey Diamond getting an awfully bad start. Uh, Eric Kehoe getting a bad start. Keith Bowen getting a very bad start. All these riders running back in about 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th spot. Still Ricky Ryan and Jeff Leesk in that number, fighting it out for that number one position. Still staying very close after a couple of laps. Another rider looking awfully strong, and that's rider number 57, that's Eddie Hicks, mounted on the Yamaha. But right now, the battle is definitely for that number one position. Guy Cooper has now taken over the number two place away from Leesk, and he's closing quickly on Ricky Ryan. Ryan making a few mistakes going around the turns. Eric Kehoe and Mickey Diamond back in the pack in about 11th and 12th spot, battling it out, trying to work their way up to catch up to the front runners and get a better position for that overall title at the end of the year. Meanwhile, it's Ricky Ryan on the downhill. And Least tries to go around the outside of Cooper, and Cooper shoves him over the berm, and now Least being a little bit out of the battle. Meanwhile, it's still Ricky Ryan in the number one position. And Guy Cooper closing. Good battle for that number one position. Meanwhile, back in the pack, riders like uh, George Holland, and Eric Kehoe, and Mickey Diamond, and Keith Bowen trying to fight their way through the pack and get back up to where they can run with the front runners.
Guy Cooper riding awfully well, putting on a good ride today. At least managing after that little mishap to uh, get himself back up into the back. And it looks like at this point we've got Guy Cooper in the number one position. Ricky Ryan having some kind of a problem in the back section of the racetrack. So it's Guy Cooper in the number one spot, Lee's playing in the number two spot, and Ricky Ryan now in the number three position. Guy Cooper looking mighty strong in the early part of this moto. It's going to be interesting to see what he does as the race progresses. And this track is very tiring, and it's a, quite a bit humid out here today. Keith Bowen, Eric Kehoe, and Mickey Diamond still in the back of the pack trying to work their way up. Meanwhile, it is Guy Cooper. Guy Cooper putting in an excellent ride. Guy Cooper doing a fine job out there today with least in the number two spot, and it's still Ricky Ryan holding down third. And up into the number four position, it looks like we've got George Holland moving up into that position now. Again, Guy Cooper with a fairly good lead over the second place rider. And it looks like Leaf has gone down in the corner and that'll move Ricky Ryan up into the number two position. So it's Guy Cooper with the lead, followed by Ricky Ryan. Guy Cooper, after about six laps gone down in his event, still looking mighty strong. And on the downhill, one of the faster places in the racetrack, Guy Cooper comes down looking mighty good at this point. And quite a ways back, Ricky Ryan, that's rider number 20 on a Kawasaki. And in the number three position, it's Yamaha mounted Eddie Hicks, putting in a mighty good ride, probably one of his best performances in the national. But here comes Keith Bowen. Keith Bowen's worked his way up to that number four spot now. Guy Cooper heading into the back section, still in that number one position. And here comes Ricky Ryan, not too far behind. About halfway through the first moto now, and it's still Guy Cooper in the number one position with Ricky Ryan in the number two spot. Eddie Hicks still holding on that number three spot, but Keith Bowen closing. And in the number four spot, excuse me, in the number five spot is George Holland with Eric Kehoe close behind. Least being one lap down, but he's in the battle now with those front runners, but he is one lap behind. We've got a real battle going on here for about the number six, seven, and eight spot. That's between the two Suzuki riders, the current points runners up in the front of the pack there, which would be George Holland and Eric Kehoe, along with Mickey Diamond. Mickey Diamond there fighting it out now for that number seven and eight spot. Rough racetrack, all sand, really rough. It's hot, it's humid out here today, and it's really taking its toll on the riders. Down the downhill, like I said, one of the faster places on the racetrack, and it's still Guy Cooper in that number one position. 
Cooper looking mighty strong. Unless he has some kind of a problem, it's going to be difficult for those guys in the back of the pack to catch him. Keith Bowen looking behind him to see what's happening back there and how close those riders are. Seems as though Bowen's pulling a little bit away from the pack of, of uh, Mickey Diamond and Eric Kehoe and George Holland. He seems to be pulling away and running a little bit faster than they are. Guy Cooper, rider number 25, Honda in the number one spot, followed by Ricky Ryan, Team Kawasaki, and Keith Bowen in the number three position. Eric Kehoe looks like he may have moved up to that number four spot. And as they go past the mechanics area, it's still Guy Cooper looking mighty strong. In the number two position, it's still Ricky Ryan. But here comes Keith Bowen, putting on a mighty hard charge here, trying to get up get that number one spot. Keith Bowen would sure like to get his first national win. But Guy Cooper running awful strong here in the number one spot. It's going to be hard for anybody to catch him. And of course, he'd still be looking for his first national win as well. In fact, the top three riders in this race here would all if they could finish in these positions, would have a good opportunity to take that overall, the number one spot for the 125 national class. Guy Cooper, not one of the smoother riders in this 125 class, but definitely one of the hardest chargers out there, and definitely the fastest one on the track at this moment. Guy Cooper seems to be pulling away considerably from the uh, second place runner and at this time it looks as though second place uh, looks as though second place would still be Ricky Ryan and in the number three spot would be Keith Bowen. Meanwhile the battle still goes on in the back of the pack between Mickey Diamond, now AJ Whiting and Eric Kehoe. Ricky Ryan looks like he may be catching up a little bit at this point and catching up to Cooper. It's going to be interesting in the later latter part of the moto. Meanwhile, Keith Bowens closed the gap and catching up to both of the front runners. And Eddie Hicks doing an awfully fine job, riding very strong. We've kind of missed him in the last couple of laps, but he is holding down that number four position. Eddie Hicks, very young rider, first year on the national circuit, putting in an excellent ride in this first moto of the 125cc class at Southwick, Massachusetts. Meanwhile, Guy Cooper blasts the berm, gets a little sideways coming off of the jump, but still going very strong in the latter part of this moto. Two laps to go, two laps and Guy Cooper still has the lead, in fact a pretty nice lead as a matter of fact, unless he has some kind of a serious problem or a fall down, uh, looks like he may be taking this first 125 moto at Southwick. But the battle is for second place, the battle is between Keith Bowen and Ricky Ryan for that number two position. Meanwhile the battle heats up for the number four spot. That's between Eddie Hicks and Mickey Diamond and George Holland. Guy Cooper looking mighty fast, coming up to one lap to go. And look at this battle for the number two position between Ricky Ryan and Keith Bowen. Ryan doing an excellent job of holding Bowen off. 
Bowen makes a drive and tries to come down the inside. And Bowen does get Ryan on the inside. As they drop out of sight and come back around, it's Ricky Ryan has taken over that number two spot again from Keith Bowen. Ryan riding an excellent race against a hard charging Bowen. As they go off into the back section for the final time, we'll have to see what happens between Ricky Ryan and Keith Bowen, rider number 20 and rider number 9. Coming out of the back section for the final time, it's rider number 25, Guy Cooper. And Guy Cooper will take moto number 1. First moto win in this 125 national class. And in second place, it's Ricky Ryan. With Keith Bowen in third, Mickey Diamond in fourth, and Eddie Hicks holding on to the number five spot. Ricky, Ricky and David, you guys seem to be the hottest thing going this year. It, it seems like you're you're hard to beat. You're just an unbeatable team. What's happened that's making you guys so much better than it seems like everybody else out there? Well, I think the big thing this year is that I made the change to Honda. Um, that's what's motivated me is, is the new bikes and everything. And I think, uh, I don't want to speak for David, but I think me going to Honda has maybe motivated him a little bit. My riding style is a little bit more wild, a little more aggressive, and I think it might have lit a little fire under David's butt. I don't know. What do you think? I think it's the same type of thing when uh, Bob Hanna came to the team uh, in 19-whatever-it-was, 1983, I believe. I rode with him a lot, and uh, I picked up a lot of things from him. I picked up a lot of things from Rick, and I'm sure he's learned some from me. But anytime somebody uh, takes off on the team and starts doing real well, you know, the other guys have to follow. I don't want to let anybody get ahead of me too far. So um, Rick has carried me along a little bit, and then I've, I've had the opportunity to beat him a few times too. So I don't know. I just got the ball rolling, and, and it's been a real successful year so far. Bob Hanna, we've missed you this year out there on the circuit. Uh, the, I guess the main question is, how are you feeling today? How healthy are you? Oh, I'm healthy. I don't know how fast I am, but I'm healthy. Maybe fast is a question. How, how can you judge when you've been off this long how fast the other riders are going and whether you've been out training hard enough? How do you, have, how do you try and figure that? I, I won't know. I'm in the dark right now. I won't know until I get out there today and, and go at it with them. I, I know you wouldn't come back if you weren't a hundred percent but I've got to ask the question are you a hundred percent do you feel that you're capable of running that full moto at the pace those guys are going to run as best you know oh really yeah, as best I know as I do but you know uh, always the guys that are racing every week have got the edge on the guys that are taking time off and I've taken uh, six months off so I'm going to be in a world of hurt out there probably but I'm going to give it all I have anyway the Bob Hanna of old the, the drive the desire to do whatever it takes to win do you have that today I think I have it today. I've got the drive and desire. I don't think I have uh, maybe the the braveness and the uh, you know maybe the physical. Or maybe I'm a little older. I don't know. I feel strong, but you uh, you lose a little edge when you're not as young. You know, every year I get a little slower and not quite as brave. I go into the corners with the other guys. Maybe I back off a second early, and you know that that doesn't win the race. You've got to be real brave and real aggressive, and you lose a little bit. You know. Ricky Johnson's tough right now. He's the toughest guy out there. Uh, I don't know if you've been watching him much, how many of the races you've been to to see what he's doing. What do you think it's going to take to beat Ricky? Probably a lot more than I've got put together, you know. Uh, I haven't watched him at all. I don't know how he's riding only by results, and by results he won 90% of the races. So I'd say if nobody else can beat him, how the heck am I supposed to? <laughs> Okay, we're getting ready for moto number one of the 250 class. Southwick 250 National. The riders are on the line getting ready. It's a little warm out there today and a little bit on the humid side. And the card is up. The riders are waiting. 30 seconds, the card goes sideways. The gate is now down. And who's it going to be for the whole shot? It looks like Johnny O'Mara getting traction off the starting grid and pulling the hole shot. Johnny O'Mara in the number one spot as they drop off into the back section with Ricky Johnson right on his tail. It's going to be a good race. Let's see when they come out of the back section what it looks like. And as they come out of the back, it's still Johnny O'Mara holding down the number one position, followed closely by Ricky Johnson. And in that number three position, it looks like Joey Slag. Johnny O'Mara in the number one spot, followed closely by Ricky Johnson. 
Joey Slag and Dennis Hawthorne in the number four position. Some of the other top riders not getting such a good start. Bob Hanna back in about 12th position. David Bailey running in about 7th position at this time. Meanwhile, the battle goes on up front between Johnny O'Mara and Ricky Johnson. And Johnson tries to move on the inside, and he passes O'Mara as they drop into the back section. Hawthorne and Slag go for the battle. Meanwhile, back in the number six position, we have Jeff Ward followed closely by David Bailey. Again, Ricky Johnson in a number one position. And it seems as though he is pulling away from Johnny O'Mara in the early part of this moto. It's still Slag and Hawthorne with David Bailey moving up to the number six position. Ricky Johnson going very fast and looking relatively smooth on this racetrack for as rough as it is. But meanwhile, Johnson is pulling away slightly from Johnny O'Mara. While Slag and Hawthorne are still battling out, but here comes Jeff Ward and David Bailey. And back in the number nine spot is Bob Hanna closing the gap. And Hanna takes another one. Now Hanna has moved up to the number six spot and closing on David Bailey. Hannah looking mighty strong for being off for the last six months, putting on a very fine ride in the early part of this motor today in the first of the 250 National Motos at Southwick, Massachusetts. Meanwhile, Ricky Johnson still holds down the number one position and pulling away from Johnny O'Mara. O'Mara riding mighty strong, riding hard, but he's not able to keep up the pace of Rick Johnson. Meanwhile, the battle goes on between David Bailey and Bob Hanna. Hanna trying to close up and get past Bailey. As the track maintenance people water the track down a little bit to try and keep the dust down for the riders, it's still Ricky Johnson in the number one spot, followed by Johnny O'Mara. And it looks as though David Bailey has moved up to the number three position, followed by Bob Hanna somewhere into the back section. And now the question is, both these riders have moved up from the back of the pack. How is Bob Hanna going to do it? Can he pass David Bailey in the latter part of this moto? Again, Hanna, the oldest rider on the circuit, coming back from a collarbone injury. How strong is he going to be as the race goes on? Meanwhile, Ricky Johnson in the number one spot with Johnny O'Mara in the number two position. And as they come past the mechanics area, it's still David Bailey followed closely by Hannah, and it seems as though Hannah has closed the gap a little more. And the fans cheer on Bob Hanna. Bob Hanna, the rider that's been out for so long, the older rider on the circuit. Everyone's wants to see him do good, and Hannah is definitely putting on the charge, and with the people behind him, it definitely helps to build his drive and his, his incentive to win. While Ricky Johnson just holds down that lead, that number one position, followed by Johnny O'Mara. Johnson having an easy go of it, coming off in the number two position, taking over the lead in the back section on the early laps, and now in the lead. While well, Johnny O'Mara runs the number two position with no pressure from anyone. While well, David Bailey in that number three position still has Bob Hanna to contend with.
Ricky Johnson. Whoa, Johnny O'Mara gets a little bit sideways coming down the straightaway. Johnny O'Mara in that number two position while David Bailey holds down third and Bob Hanna in the number four spot. And an interesting thing about Bob Hanna and David Bailey, Bob Hanna used to be David Bailey's idol. In fact, when Bob Hanna first started racing and doing really well, David Bailey used to show up to the races and ask Bob Hanna for his autograph. So that tells you how long Bob Hanna's been around doing the job that he's been doing, being very popular with the fans. Strong, determined rider. And at this point, riding very strong for being off six months and away from the competition, having no idea how fast these guys are riding all year long. While Ricky Johnson dives into the back section, rider number five, followed by Johnny O'Mara in the number two spot. Bob Hanna in the number four spot. So at this present time, we have Honda one, two, three with Suzuki in fourth. Hanna still charging hard, trying to put the move on Bailey. Ricky Johnson looking awful strong as we get into about the three-quarter mark into this moto while Johnny O'Mara just holding down that number two position. Doesn't look like he has quite the drive that Johnson has, uh, but he doesn't have to go too hard to hold that number two spot while David Bailey is in the number three spot being pressed by Bob Hanna, rider number seven. And RJ gets into some lap traffic. Definitely a big problem on these tracks, getting into lap traffic, and those, sometimes those riders can slow your pace or knock you down. They can definitely end the day for you. Seems as though in the last lap or so that David Bailey has pulled away a little bit from Bob Hanna. Could be the age, the training, the, the pace that these riders are running. Might be a little bit difficult for Bob to handle due to the fact that he's not used to it. Again, Ricky Johnson comes by looking mighty strong, getting sprayed by some of the slower riders on the track. Sometimes it's difficult to get the slower riders to move over. You try to come by and they, and they want to race with you and you need to get them to move. There's a blue flag that is displayed, but some of the riders don't pay attention to it. This rider at this point should realize that Ricky Johnson is not a back runner and that uh, he's leading the race and he should be moving over. However, as soon as he comes around to the checker flag area, they will notify him that he must be moving over. Well, Johnson gets by the lapper, comes around the mechanics area, does a little swap right there in the mechanics area, brings it back, Ricky Johnson in the number one position. Johnny O'Mara still in that number two spot. And David Bailey has closed on Johnny O'Mara. David Bailey going after that number two position down the fast downhill. It's Ricky Johnson with a pretty good lead. However, the battle now is for that number two position between Johnny O'Mara and David Bailey. Meanwhile, Bob Hanna is still back there. He's still in contention. But the real battle is between number three and number six, the two Honda team riders. Johnny O'Mara and David Bailey. David Bailey closes rapidly on Johnny O'Mara. Bailey coming from a mid-pack start, at least about 12th place, working his way up into the number three position and now working on Johnny O'Mara for that number two spot. Again, a lapper becoming a problem. Not leaving the riders a place to go. The lapper goes over the berm, gives Bailey room, and Bailey again puts on his charge toward O'Mara. Bailey and O'Mara, both Team Honda, very good friends. Ride together all the time. Sometimes it's difficult to pass uh, someone like that. However, the race goes on, and when these guys get on the racetrack, friendship ends.
David Bailey is closed right up to the rear wheel of Johnny O'Mara. Bailey trying every trick in the book to try and get around O'Mara. And at the later laps of this race, the problem now with the heat, uh, the weariness of the riders, the concentration is extremely important. That's what makes the difference in the latter part of these motos. Meanwhile, Ricky Johnson still holds down that number one position. And meanwhile, the battle still goes on, but David Bailey has passed Johnny O'Mara somewhere up on the top section of the racetrack. So Bailey moves into the number two position with dropping Johnny O'Mara to the number three spot. However, Ricky Johnson is pretty long gone. It's gonna be difficult for David Bailey to make up that much ground and with only a few laps left in this moto to be able to take over that number one spot. Looks like it may be very difficult for these riders to change their position. Ricky Johnson has a pretty decent lead here. Gonna be very difficult unless he has some serious problems for Bailey to catch him. Unless Johnny O'Mara gets a second win, it looks like David Bailey may take that number two position, but O'Mara is still keeping strong and staying after him, and here comes Bob Hanna in the number four position. So still anything can happen. There's always the unfortunate problem of mechanical problems. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Meanwhile, Ricky Johnson looking mighty smooth, getting into lap traffic, having to worry about the lap riders and what they're gonna do to him. Hope he doesn't interfere with his racing at all. David Bailey in that number two position again, followed closely by Johnny O'Mara. Again, Bob Hand in the number four spot, still looking mighty strong for a guy of his age and being off as long as he's been off with a broken collarbone. The fourth place finish is really something that he should be happy about. Meanwhile, here comes Ricky Johnson dropping down into the pit and coming down the front straightaway. Ricky Johnson is going to be the winner of moto number one in the 250 class. In second place will be David Bailey, then Johnny O'Mara, Bob Hanna, and in the number five spot will be Billy Lyles, Team Kawasaki. And that's moto number one from Southwick, Massachusetts. In the 125 class, it's moto number two sitting on the line and the card is up, the riders are waiting. The card goes sideways and the gate's gonna get ready to drop and it's down and let's see who's gonna be the leader from the start of moto number one. Into the first turn, it looks like number 20, Ricky Ryan again, pulling another hole shot. And Ricky Ryan, as they drop into the back section, is in the number one position. It looks as though some of the top factory riders in this moto got a better start. It looks like some of the Suzuki riders were right up front. Ricky Ryan once again takes the hole shot from the field, followed closely by a field of tough riders while Mickey Diamond, Honda mounted back in about 10th, 11th spot, tries to work his way up. Guy Cooper, winner of Moto number one running in about the number 14 spot in this second moto while Ricky Ryan still has the lead in moto number two. Ryan looking a little sloppy at this point. However, Ricky Ryan has been sick all week long and it's surprising to see him going as strong as he is, particularly late in that first moto. But Ricky Ryan doing an excellent job again in this second moto, holding down that number one position. Ryan goes past the mechanics area, still holding down the number one spot after about three laps of the race.
Looks like A.J. Whiting now in the number two position. We've got a Kawasaki rider in the number three position. That's rider number 77. Ricky Ryan looking over his shoulder to see what's happening with the competition behind. While A.J. Whiting in that number two position closes ground slightly. While Keith Bowen, it looks like, may have moved into that number three position. Bowen riding awful strong in the first moto. Moving up to Ryan, but not able to pass Ryan in that first moto. Now, in order, order for Bowen to take the overall, he is going to get, have to get past Whiting and Ryan. And Bowen has moved up into that number three position. But once again, it's Ricky Ryan in the lead in moto number two here at Southwick, Massachusetts in the 125cc national class. While A.J. Whiting holds off the charge of Keith Bowen, and Bowen tries around the outside. No dice. Eric Kehoe has moved up into that number four position. It looks like Mickey Diamond now in the number six position. Several riders, riders looking for their number one first national win. One would be Keith Bowen. Keith Bowen, Mickey Diamond, Ricky Ryan, Guy Cooper, all looking for their first national win. And meanwhile, somewhere in the back section, Bowen has caught up and gone by Ricky Ryan. Ryan must have had some problems in the back section because Bowen definitely reeled him in and now Bowen has moved up. Keith Bowen taking over the lead in moto number two. Ricky Ryan running in that number two position. Meanwhile, the number three spot is A.J. Whiting and Diamond's moved up to the number four spot. Keith Bowen looking mighty strong on this sand track. In fact, he's really pulled away from Ricky Ryan. Ryan seems as though he's showing some fatigue while A.J. Whiting and Mickey Diamond have their dice going for that number three position. Whiting and Diamond battling it out for the number three spot. Meanwhile, Keith Bowen up on the top section of the racetrack with the number one spot. Ryan holding down the number two position, but those guys in third place are definitely closing up the gap, and that's A.J. Whiting and Mickey Diamond. That overall is still up for grabs. If Bowen has any kind of problem at all, it could be Ryan, it could be Diamond. They all have a shot for the number one position. Keith Bowen looking mighty strong and mighty smooth at this stage of the game. We're about halfway through the second moto of the 125s, and now the race is getting interesting. Diamond has moved past A.J. Whiting, and Diamond's moved into the number three position and pushing hard on Ricky Ryan. Diamond looking mighty strong in the late stage of his moto. Keith Bowen flying down the front straightaway. Rough and choppy and humid and he's got to be a little bit tired. But now the story is Mickey Diamond. Mickey Diamond has moved up into the number two position. Diamond trying to close the gap on Bowen. If Diamond can beat Bowen, he could take the overall position.
Jay Whiting moves back to the number three position. Uh, Keith Bowen drops into the back section. Yamaha mounted Keith Bowen, rider number nine. Honda mounted factory rider Mickey Diamond, rider number 43. In third place, the Suzuki of AJ Whiting. Only a few laps remaining in Keith Bowen at this stage has a commanding lead and also the opportunity to win the 125 national class here at Southwick, Massachusetts. And the battle is for the number four position between Ricky Ryan and A.J. Whiting. While Keith Bowen charges the berm, throws the sand in the air, blasts around the corner. Only a few laps left. Mickey Diamond trying to close the gap on Keith Bowen, but with little success. Bowen riding awfully strong in the latter part of this moto. While the battle goes on for the number three position between Ricky Ryan and AJ Whiting. Ricky Ryan putting in a very strong ride for being sick all week long and coming back. Didn't think he was gonna be able to do that well today. Got a couple of good starts, a couple of hole shots, and been riding extremely well. Riding very strong for as hot and humid as it is out today. And meanwhile, the story is Keith Bowen, Team Yamaha. Mickey Diamond in the number two position, trying to close ground on Boeing, but with little luck. Meanwhile, that battle still goes on between Ricky Ryan and A.J. Whiting. Tough battle for the last three or four laps. These guys are really going at it, and I wouldn't want to be in Whiting's position right now with all that sand in every corner coming up on him, getting in his goggles. Makes it a little tougher. Ryan's got a little bit of an advantage being able to see where he's going. While A.J. Whiting tries every move he can possibly think of on the inside, on the outside. Here comes Bowen, Keith Bowen. And we have two laps to go while Keith Bowen, leader of moto number two. And here comes Mickey Diamond trying to close the gap, but I don't think he's gonna do it. There's not enough time. Still with two laps to go, it's still Ricky Ryan in that number three position, followed by A.J. Whiting. And the white flag comes out, one lap to go. Keith Bowen with about a quarter of a lap to go, and he will take the overall in this 125 national class here at Southwick, Massachusetts. And up through the pit and around the turn for the final time, and the checker flag comes out for Keith Bowen, rider number one, followed by Mickey Diamond, Ricky Ryan, A.J. Whiting, and Eric Kehoe. And for the overall, it will be Keith Bowen with Ryan in second, Diamond in third, Guy Cooper in fourth, and A.J. Whiting taking the final spot. So Yamaha takes the national 125 win for the day with Kawasaki in second and Honda in third. Meanwhile, on the line, we've got the second moto of the 250cc class. Riders waiting for the gate to go down, and it drops, and let's see who we're gonna have with the whole shot in this second moto. Looks like a Honda again. 
But as they drop into the back section, a little difficult to see through some of the dust. It looks like, and it is, it's Johnny O'Mara for the second start of the day. Johnny O'Mara taking the whole shot. This time, Ricky Johnson not in the number two position. Looks like he's running about fourth or fifth. Meanwhile, not too good of starts for Jeff Ward and David Bailey and Bob Hanna. They're running in the back of the pack. Johnny O'Mara with the number one position and rider number 19 in the number two spot. And that's Danny Storbach. Bob Hanna way back on this start, trying to work his way through the pack. Well, Johnny O'Mara pulls the whole shot and has his way about how things are gonna go in the early part of this moto. Danny Starback, rider number 19 in the number two spot with rider number two, Team Kawasaki, Ron Lachine in third. Meanwhile, in the back section of the racetrack, Ricky Johnson has gotten past Machine and Starback and taken over that number two position and now he's on his way after Johnny O'Mara while David Bailey's worked his way past some riders in the last couple of laps and he's moved up to the number five position. Johnny O'Mara and Ricky Johnson having a battle. Let's see if Ricky Johnson can get by Johnny O'Mara as easily in this moto as he did in the first moto. Oh, Bob Hanna is down. Bob Hanna's hit a burn. He's high-sided over it and looks as though he may possibly be injured. Hanna doesn't look like he's doing too good at this point. Bob Hanna is definitely hurting. Meanwhile, the battle goes on for the number one position. It's Johnny O'Mara and Ricky Johnson running one-two. O'Mara holding off the charge of Ricky Johnson. Fine ride by Johnny O'Mara. Johnny O'Mara working real hard. Johnson tries the outside, tries to come to the inside, and O'Mara closes him off. Meanwhile, the battle goes on for the number three position between rider number two and rider number 19, while David Bailey back in that number five position trying to catch up to the front runners. O'Mara still holding on to the number one position, followed closely by Rick Johnson. Ronnie Lachine in the number four spot, Starback in the number five spot. Bob Hennett appears as though he's up and he is all right. Doesn't seem to be anything seriously while the battle still goes on between Rick Johnson and Johnny O'Mara, and Rick Johnson tries an inside line and can't quite get by O'Mara as they go up through the mechanics area. Johnny O'Mara doing a fine job in moto number two, holding off the charge of Rick Johnson, and Johnson tries the outside line again. Johnson crosses over and goes back to the inside and still can't get by O'Mara. Meanwhile, David Bailey still holds down that number six position. Johnny O'Mara and Ricky Johnson, and what a battle they're having out here on the racetrack. Ricky Johnson eating all the sand, all the dust from Johnny O'Mara, while Johnny says, no way, Ricky, you're not going by in this one. Johnson tries everything, the inside, the outside, everything he tries doesn't work. O'Mara and Johnson up on the top section and Johnson goes to the inside. Johnson passes. No, not quite, he couldn't get his wheel past. Meanwhile, O'Mara comes in and holds the inside line again and O'Mara still has that number one position. Again, Johnson goes to the outside. Johnson comes up, still can't quite get his wheel past. Crosses over and tries to pass him on the inside in the next turn. While Ronnie Lachine holds down that number three's position. And Jojo Keller in the number four position. Number five, Danny Storback in number six position is David Bailey. 
in the back section. Johnny O'Mara seems as though he's pulled away a little bit from Ricky Johnson. Johnny O'Mara still holds on to that number one position, but being pressed hard by Rick Johnson. And it's Honda, Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Yamaha, and Honda. JoJo Keller putting in an excellent ride in this second moto of the 250s. Meanwhile, the battle goes on for the number one position between Johnny O'Mara and Ricky Johnson. Johnson once again tries around the outside, tries to cross over and come back to the inside as they go into the mechanics area, but no dice, it's still Johnny O'Mara. And once again, here comes Johnson on the outside. In that number three position, Kawasaki mounted Ron Lachine. Meanwhile, Danny Starback is in the number four position and David Bailey has moved up to the number five spot. And the battle gets closer for the number one position between Omar and Johnson. Johnson swings around the outside, but no dice, he can't make the pass. Running up on the rear wheel of Johnny Omar. Johnson wanting desperately to get by Johnny O'Mara for the overall win for today. O'Mara comes by, Johnson cuts back to the inside, no dice. Johnson goes to the inside again, he still can't get past. O'Mara slows a little for the jump, Johnson hits it a little bit harder. Johnson tries once again an inside line, crosses back over to the outside. And as they go down the top straightaway again, it's Ricky Johnson, and Johnson takes him on the outside. It's now Johnson in the number one position with Johnny O'Mara in the number two spot. Now let's see what Johnny O'Mara can do. Let's see if he can come back and make the pass on Johnson. Down the fastest, one of the faster part of the racetrack, the downhill, it's Ricky Johnson, it's Johnny O'Mara. It's Team Honda, one and two. Bob Danny Starback holds on to the number three position. Ron Lachine in the number four position, but he's being pressed hard by David Bailey, rider number six. Bailey takes an outside line, squares off, and Lachine goes over the top of the berm slightly, and Bailey takes over the number four position. Danny Starback putting in an excellent ride, Team Yamaha rider, uh, holding on to that number three position, probably one of his better rides of the year in the national. But the battle still goes on for that number one position between Johnson and O'Mara. Bailey trying to close up on Starbuck. And it appears as though Johnson has pulled away from O'Mara. Meanwhile, the battle for the number three position between Bailey and Storbeck. Storback taking a wider line, Bailey cutting more to the inside. Seems as though Bailey's closed the gap a little more while Ricky Johnson holds on to the number one position and proceeds to pull away from Johnny O'Mara. Johnny O'Mara riding a very strong race, however unable to catch the charge of Ricky Johnson. Meanwhile, Bailey seems as though he's closed a little more on Danny Starbuck. And at this present time, we have Honda in the number one spot, in the number two spot, and in the number three spot with a Yamaha, excuse me, Honda in the number four spot with a Yamaha in the number three spot. Ricky Johnson looking mighty smooth on this sand track today. It's hot and it's humid. Tough on the riders and tough on the machines. 
In the latter part of this moto, Ricky Johnson still going extremely well. But the surprise story may be Danny Storback. Storback in the number three position, and he has pulled away from Bailey. Ricky Johnson coming by for the checkered flag, and that's it. Ricky Johnson takes moto number two with Johnny O'Mara in the number two spot, Danny Starback in third, David Bailey in fourth, and the overall Ricky Johnson takes first place. Johnny O'Mara, David Bailey, Danny Starback, and Ronnie Lachine taking the final position. And so it's Honda, one, two, three, with the Yamaha, and then a Kawasaki. Ricky Johnson with an excellent ride today in both motos. Rick, there's not too much we can say about your performance out there. There's been uh, three nationals, there's been six motos, and you've won all of them. Uh, was there anything out there today that gave you any particular kind of a problem? Well, I haven't been riding sand lately, so that gave me a little bit of a problem. The humidity was playing a big factor. I got pretty tired out there, but I tried to conserve myself, you know, when I was <coughs> racing behind Johnny in the second moto. It takes a lot out of you to sit and get blasted in the face with sand. You know, you're trying to breathe, you're sucking in sand, and, <coughs> and also you can't see, so that was a factor, but uh, mainly the humidity. Johnny, you're looking really good out there today. You got a couple of hole shots, uh, you let it for a while. What, what happened? Well, the only thing I could figure that happened is that he just was riding a little bit better, and uh, just goes to see by his results all year. He's been winning, and he's uh, he's got a lot of confidence, and he's not making any mistakes. And uh, I felt like I was riding really good. I wasn't really making too many mistakes. He's just uh, seemed like uh, keeping his momentum a little bit more than I was through the sand and some of the turns and stuff like that. And you know, we were pretty close, but you know, he had a little bit of an edge on me. And, this ride. Today, Honda rider number five, Rick Johnson. Do you mind? It was still fun, but uh, the track was definitely rough. It's always a pleasure to come back to the East Coast because you get the people that are a little bit more motocross-minded. They appreciate a good show and a good ride. And, uh,